know, Daddy, actually. What? I was stunned by my young daughter Ashley's confession. That man, doing such things behind my back, I'll never forgive him. At that moment, I decided I would do whatever it takes to make my husband, Kevin, deeply regret his actions and drag him through hell. My name is Emily, and I'm 42 years old. I struggle with the summer heat, and every year as the season approaches, my appetite plummets, leaving me feeling drained. I'm not sure if it's my way of coping, or if the recent summers have just been abnormally hot, but this year, I'm planning to stock up on ice cream to at least get some sugar into my system. I always try different strategies to handle the summer, but winter brings its own bitter memories. This happened a few years ago. I was happily living with my husband Kevin and our daughter Ashley. All right, Ashley, let's go out with Dad. Okay. Kevin took Ashley's hand, ready to leave the house. Ashley seemed reluctant. That sounds fun. Where are you going? Take me with you. I asked Kevin excitedly, but his response was cold. What? You don't need to come. What? Housework's tough, right? Just take care of the house. What's that supposed to mean? You didn't take me last time either. Have you been cold to me lately? Enough already. I knew he wasn't joking by the serious look on his face, but I wanted to believe it was, so I made a joking gesture. No, no, it's just me being considerate because you're busy. However, Kevin just spat out those insincere words and took our daughter Ashley to the parking lot. If it was really about consideration, he would have said something like, Housework must be tough, let's go out for a break, or I'll help with the housework. Lately, Kevin has been going out more often, just taking Ashley with him. Where did you go? It's a secret. I'm turned down when I try to join them, and even when I ask them after they return, they don't tell me. I wonder if my family dislikes me. Maybe Ashley dislikes me because I'm always strict about what she likes and dislikes. Maybe it's because I'm a stay-at-home mom and hardly ever go out except for local shopping, and I barely even wear makeup these days. Thinking about it, I feel there might be some shortcomings on my part. All right, I'll try to look nice today. After finishing the housework, I put on makeup and prepared a lot of Ashley's favorite foods for dinner, waiting for their return. How was your day, Kevin Ashley? I greeted the two of them with a smile as they returned home. Hi. However, Kevin was indifferent and wouldn't even meet my eyes. Ashley seemed tired from playing, her face showing signs of fatigue. Ashley, did you have fun on your outing? Yeah. Didn't you enjoy it? Of course she did. Right, Ashley? I was asking Ashley, but for some reason, Kevin interjected into the conversation. It was fun. Ashley responded, prompted by Kevin. But her reply seemed hesitant. Ashley usually shares the day's events with enthusiasm when she truly enjoys herself, so I felt something was off. Meanwhile, Kevin seemed anxious about Ashley's lukewarm response. I couldn't tell if they hadn't enjoyed where they went or if they were hiding something, as neither of them said much. They might have just gone out to play, but since I wasn't included, a strange unease lingered in my mind. That day, the only one who commented on my makeup and outfit was Ashley, who got better. Mom, you look beautiful today. At Ashley's words, Kevin glanced over at me. Well, you really do. But that was all Kevin said. I wish he would say a little more.
I was tempted to get angry, but I stopped myself, thinking maybe my effort was misguided since it seemed he hadn't noticed my appearance at all. I thought they both disliked me. I didn't really know what to do about my own family. After that, Kevin continued to take only Ashley out somewhere every weekend. No matter what I said, he wouldn't take me along. They would come back later each time, eventually not returning until after 10 p.m., setting a new record for their latest return. Kevin carried a sound asleep Ashley on his back. After such excessive behavior continued, I couldn't help but scold Kevin right after he got home. Hey, where have you been taking Ashley until this late? She has preschool tomorrow. She needs to go to bed early, not be dragged around until nearly midnight. Kevin frowned as if to say my words were just noise. He ignored me as if he couldn't hear me at all and just went upstairs. Hey, are you listening? If you care about Ashley enough to take her out every week, you should think about her health too. Enough already. Suddenly, Kevin raised his voice as if a dam had broken. Ashley, who had been sound asleep, woke up from Kevin's shouting and started crying. Hey, Ashley, come here, don't cry. I took Ashley from Kevin's back and held her. Come on, don't shout when Ashley is here. What's your problem? You start fussing the minute I get home. Are you in a bad mood because you're not taken out too? That's not it. I'm just saying if you're going to take Ashley out, consider the time. You sure? You're just jealous because Ashley always gets to go. Why would you think that? It's normal for a parent not to want their child out late at night. Just prepare the bath and bring the clothes. What an attitude. Forget it. Get your own clothes. What? You always bring them for me. Well, I'm upset with your attitude, so you deserve it. I won't do anything. Gosh, what an old witch. I really messed up choosing a wife. Kevin gave me a look that was anything but loving and walked away. He slammed the door with a loud bang and stomped off towards the bathroom. I couldn't help feeling frightened. What's with him? I don't think I said anything wrong. Rather, Kevin lacks too much awareness as a father. He used to be more family-oriented, and he wasn't someone who would frighten everyone with his anger. Why has he become like this? It's been almost six years since we married, and it might be time to reevaluate our relationship. Since that day, Kevin's careless treatment towards me has become more apparent. Can you handle this for me? What? One Sunday, Kevin handed me a note. It was written in Kevin's handwriting, listing items like ice cream and snacks. What's this? You want me to buy them? You're free anyway. Please do it. No way. You're just sitting at home doing nothing too. Go buy it yourself. What? Don't talk back to me like that. I'm the breadwinner here. Who do you think pays for this comfortable life? Who do you think makes it possible for you to live without doing any housework? You earn the money, I manage the home. It's just a division of roles. We should be equals. Not cute. Ashley, tell mom. Say mean old witch. Mean old witch? Ashley repeated the words Kevin told her, looking puzzled. However, Kevin seemed pleased that Ashley had said it. Say it more. Kevin was laughing and egging her on. Why do I have to be called a mean old witch just for speaking the truth? Ashley, noticing my irritation, looked at me with an embarrassed face, so I forced a smile just for her. Anyway, do your own shopping. Stingy wife. Even Ashley, who's just a preschooler, takes care of her own needs. 
I wanted to argue back, but I stayed silent to avoid a big fight. Lately, my arguments with Kevin have been increasing. Thinking about the bad influence it might have on Ashley, I've been trying to keep my emotions in check and avoid clashes with Kevin. Is there any way to rebuild a good relationship with Kevin again? At this rate, the word divorce seems to be looming in my mind. Ashley is attached to Kevin, and I want to avoid that option as much as possible. As a parent, and as a wife, I've been racking my brain for something I could do. But Kevin probably isn't considering my feelings at all. While he has decreased the times he takes Ashley out, his late night outings have increased. He leaves the house after dinner for walks and doesn't return for hours, or he's gone all day on weekends. Since our arguments have increased, maybe he doesn't want to be around me. I want to get along, but it feels like I'm just spinning my wheels. Ashley's expression also seems somewhat gloomier. Pondering what to do, I made a suggestion to Kevin. Ashley's birthday is coming up. Why don't we go to the aquarium and then eat out to celebrate her birthday? How about it? Ashley was thrilled with my suggestion. Though Kevin seemed reluctant, he agreed, perhaps because he couldn't say no given Ashley's reaction. Spending time together as a family should change this tense atmosphere. I thought that by enjoying ourselves outside rather than at home, our conversations would increase. But on Ashley's birthday, Kevin said, I got a call from work and have to go in. What? You have to work today? Sorry, but I have to go to the office. See ya. Wait, just a minute. Hey. Kevin left in a hurry without really apologizing. Mommy, what about the aquarium? Ashley was tearful. Caught off guard by the sudden change, I wasn't sure what to do, but tried to soothe Ashley ambiguously. I'm sorry, okay? In the end, Ashley and I went to the aquarium by ourselves, and we cancelled eating out just in case Kevin might come back. However, Kevin didn't contact us even late at night and unexpectedly came home in the morning. How can you cancel our family plans and not even contact us, then come home in the morning? I couldn't help but yell at Kevin as soon as he returned, having stayed up waiting. But Kevin didn't look the least bit sorry. It was work, so there's nothing I can do about it. Kevin was defiant. I'm not angry that you had to cancel because of work. I'm angry because you show no remorse. Yesterday, I took Ashley to the aquarium because she was looking forward to it, and she was sad the whole time because you weren't there. And we even canceled our dinner out because Ashley wanted to eat with you. We waited just the two of us. When you cancel plans like that, don't you even think that maybe your family is waiting at home? You don't even say sorry. My frustration with Kevin poured out uncontrollably. Though I knew I shouldn't say it, I couldn't stop myself. It was your choice to wait up. If you're going to complain, you should have just gone to sleep instead of staying up. Don't use Ashley as an excuse for your bad mood. You're just snapping at me for no reason. Why are you turning it into that kind of discussion? Don't you care at all that you missed Ashley's birthday? I've told you several times. It was because of work. Are you telling me to quit my job? Not that. Enough. I'm tired. I'm going to take a bath and sleep. And then, like during a previous argument, Kevin turned away and went to the bathroom. I've told myself countless times that it couldn't be true, but perhaps it really is impossible to continue as a couple. If I stay married just for Ashley's sake and keep up this facade of a marriage, she might sense something is wrong eventually and get hurt anyway. If we continue to be tense like this, it's only a matter of time before Ashley notices. 
Children aren't that naive. But right now, Ashley loves both Kevin and me. If we divorced and she had to choose just one of us, it would surely be tough for her. I couldn't decide whether to divorce or not, and my heart was wavering. Then one day, it happened. Ashley, I'm sorry we couldn't go to the aquarium for your birthday the other day. How about we take a bath together with Daddy today? Bath? I'll play with my dolls. Ashley was delighted to be invited to the bath by Kevin. It had been years since Kevin bathed with Ashley. But it seemed Kevin felt bad about the other day. I thought it was okay if he didn't apologize to me, as long as he felt sorry towards Ashley, so I felt a bit relieved when Kevin apologized to her. Mommy, Daddy said he'll play with me in the bath. Yes. That's great, Ashley. Ashley, happily clutching her bath toys, skipped towards the bathroom. She's so adorable. I felt a warm, cozy feeling inside. Have fun. Yeah. Kevin is still curt with me, but that's okay for now. As long as Ashley looks happy, that's enough for me. About 20 minutes after Kevin and Ashley went to the bath. Emily, Emily, help. I heard Kevin's weakening loud voice and, fearing something had happened to Ashley, I rushed to the bathroom and there, I found Kevin, half out of the bathroom, collapsed into the changing area as if he had crawled out. Kevin, what happened? He didn't respond so he seemed unconscious, though he was breathing. His arms and legs were red, possibly from overheating. Glancing around, I noticed Ashley was missing. Her clothes weren't in the changing area. What's going on? She should have been in the bath. As much as I felt bad for Kevin, finding Ashley was my priority, so I frantically searched the house. Then, going outside and around to the back of the bath, I heard a faint voice coming from the storage shed. Mommy, Mommy. It was Ashley's voice. I immediately opened the door to the shed. There was Ashley, sitting alone among some cleaning tools and trash, meant to be thrown out. Why is she here? Hide and seek? No, that can't be it. It might seem unusual, but our house has a back door in the bathroom. It was because we used to have a large dog. It was convenient for washing its paws after walks, so we designed it that way. Thus, it was entirely possible for Ashley to have come to this shed from the bathroom on her own. However, Ashley had been looking forward to bathing with Kevin so it seemed unlikely she would suddenly hide in the shed on her own. I suspected Kevin. Why are you here? Did Daddy tell you to stay here? I instinctively hugged Ashley. Poor thing. She was so cold from being in the freezing shed. Yes. Daddy told me, before we got in the bath, to wait here and not come out until he called me. Why would he do that? You know, I've been keeping a secret. What? What Ashley told me was horrifying. I felt ashamed for being oblivious all this time. And even more, I felt hatred toward Kevin. I'll never forgive him. I'll make him regret this from the bottom of my heart. This is when I decided to take everything away from Kevin. What? Oh, what? It's cold. What's this? Hey, is that you, Emily? Kevin's voice conveyed his confusion clearly. Yes, you're awake now. You're saying you're awake now. Did you leave me undressed in the bathroom, cold-hearted wife? Then Kevin opened the door and came back into the changing area. Immediately, Kevin's face tensed up. What? Dad? 
Mom? Sitting with me in the changing area waiting for Kevin were his parents, Susan and Mark. They were glaring at Kevin sternly. Why are you two here? Hey, don't look. I'm not wearing any clothes. Give me a towel towel. Kevin frantically grabbed a bath towel to cover himself. Oh, you should be hiding much more than just that, shouldn't you? What are you trying to say? Kevin responded to my question with an annoyed attitude. He could only act this way for so long. This person you should have kept hidden, shouldn't you? I dragged a woman from the hallway into the changing area, whom I had asked to wait. No way, stop it. Seeing her, Kevin's expression froze again. What? Why is she? So, you were having a date with this Riley in our bath, pushing Ashley into the shed? How did you know? Kevin immediately covered his mouth, his expression revealing his guilt. Delighted by Kevin's slip, I couldn't help but smirk. I heard everything from Ashley and Riley. No matter how much you try to hide it, it's futile. Just give up. Kevin clutched his head at my words. It seems he realized he could no longer keep it a secret. What I heard from Ashley was a shocking story indeed. Kevin had apparently been repeatedly cheating with this woman, Riley. He'd even taken Ashley along with him. Yes, the outings he claimed to be taking Ashley on were actually visits to Riley's house. No wonder I was never invited. Don't tell mommy where we went or who we met, okay? Because Ashley, you would get in trouble, right? That's what Kevin had been telling Ashley, coaxing her into silence. So, Ashley, not really wanting to go to Riley's house, had no choice but to keep quiet about it. Using Ashley as an alibi for your affairs is despicable. I've lost all respect for you, you disgrace. Susan slapped Kevin hard across the face. Then she started hitting him with a bottle of laundry detergent, and no one tried to stop her. Only Riley hesitantly tried to intervene. That's enough. Everyone felt it was justified to scold Kevin. Why would you bring my parents into this over my affair? That's low, Emily. I don't want to hear it from a man who cheats. I just wanted Susan and Mark, who adore Ashley, to know how far your misconduct has gone. What's wrong with that? That's right. Don't you dare talk back. Mark agreed with me and yelled at Kevin. Their hatred for Kevin might be stronger than mine, given their deep love for their granddaughter, Ashley. Mark, who was quite the troublemaker in his youth, had a fierce look that made Kevin tremble. Seriously, Riley, why did you get caught? I made sure you got away. That's... I had found out from Riley herself that Kevin had invited her here. The reason Kevin did such a foolish thing as inviting his affair partner, Riley, to our house goes back to Ashley's birthday. That day, Kevin had apparently planned to meet Riley. He intended to take Ashley along as usual. However, my suggestion for Ashley's birthday party changed his plans. Sorry, but I need to cancel this time. Which is more important to you, your family or me? Riley was angry at Kevin for this. From there, their relationship became a bit strained, and things were awkward between them. Recently, Kevin had apologized. I'm sorry, I'll take care of you. And as proof that he valued Riley more than his family, he invited her to our house. If Emily finds out about you, I'll choose you next time. Kevin had even gone so far as to say such a cheesy line. He talks about inviting her over, but it was just for a brief encounter in the bath, hardly an invitation. Moreover, 
to ensure he wouldn't be suspected for taking too long in the bath, he brought Ashley, who loves playing in the bath. It's showing his cowardly nature. But Riley was apparently happy nonetheless. Love is blind, as they say. Thus, they ended up having a secret meeting in our house. However, Kevin got too excited about meeting his mistress, Riley, in the unusual setting of our home bath, which caused his blood pressure to rise. He then overheated and lost consciousness. Just before losing consciousness, he managed to help Riley escape through the back door, but in her haste, she forgot to take her clothes and left with just a towel. Kevin meant to retrieve her things for her, but the back door was locked after he passed out. With nowhere else to go, she ended up hiding behind our shed, where I easily found her. This wasn't supposed to happen. I'm sorry. Riley said with tears in her eyes. Kevin groaned and sighed in annoyance. This is the worst. What a despicable thing to say at a time like this. I couldn't help but scold Kevin for his attitude. Regardless of her being your mistress, isn't that a terrible way to treat Riley, who is in tears? Whose side are you on? I'm certain I'm not on yours. Kevin clicked his tongue. Susan and Mark also frowned in displeasure at Kevin's attitude. Noticing their reaction, Kevin awkwardly averted his eyes and said, She's just making things up. I didn't cheat. What? Riley looked at Kevin with a puzzled expression. Suddenly, an unexpected betrayal occurred. That's right. She broke into the back door on her own and kidnapped Ashley from the bath. No way, that's far-fetched. Everyone there must have thought so. However, Kevin seemed desperate to get away with his poor excuse. She's a trespasser. Kevin was blaming Riley. Unbelievable. You were the one who invited me. I still have your messages on my phone. Riley's words made Kevin falter. That's right, I've taken Riley's phone, so I've seen all your exchanges after that. Look for yourself. Riley took on a smug attitude. Don't think you can save yourself and leave me to take the fall. If I'm going to hell, you're going too. Then Riley slapped Kevin. What are you doing? Despite his words, Kevin was speechless, biting his lip in silence. Emily, I'm sorry for getting involved with Kevin. Please forgive me. It seemed Riley had decided to betray Kevin. She was clearly trying to curry favor with me. That's not fair. Kevin was whining like a child behind her. Don't worry, Riley. There's no way only one of you will get away. I'll make sure I send you both to hell together. What? They should be here any minute now. What are you talking about? No, I mean a different matter. I don't understand. A little after this exchange, our doorbell rang. Excuse me, Mark. Could you please go greet the person who just arrived and bring them here? Understood. Looking puzzled by my request, Mark headed to the front door. Then, a person arrived in the changing area guided by Mark. What? Riley's face tensed up. Understandably. She must have been shocked. I couldn't help but smirk. This is Riley's father. I found his contact in Riley's phone and emailed him to explain the situation and invited him here. As I introduced him with a smile, Kevin exclaimed. No. What? Why are you here? Daniel, the division manager. Kevin got shocked and Riley turned pale. Wait, the division manager, what's going on? 
Emily, why did you bring the division manager from our company here? I think calling her parents is one thing, but you've got the wrong person. You're making things complicated. Oh my god, well I... Thinking it was a mistake, I checked the outgoing messages on Riley's phone. But indeed, I had messaged the person saved as dad. There was no mistake. So this person must be Riley's father. Meanwhile, Daniel stood there pale, stunned. No way. Riley. Daniel groaned. Riley broke down crying. I'm sorry, forgive me. Kevin was dumbfounded. Aren't I your boyfriend? What do you mean, father? That's well. Riley looked around helplessly, and Daniel desperately tried to get to the truth. I called him because he was saved in your phone as dad, thinking he was your father, is that not correct? Daniel was taken aback by my question. Dad? Riley looks down, likely unable to face anyone. So, you saw me as a father, not a lover? Was I just a wallet to you? No, that's not it. I really loved you. Then why did you save me as dad in your phone? I thought it was strange. You always wanted things when we met. And the marriage talks were going nowhere. Listen, it's not like that. I don't care anymore. I thought we were seriously together. Initially, it was all very confusing, but it appears Riley and Kevin had started an affair while working at the same company. At the same time, Riley was dating Daniel. While it sounds nice to call it dating, she was essentially receiving financial support from him. Daniel, thinking it was a serious relationship, had even considered marriage, but Riley was not enthusiastic and the conversation was always evasive. Yet, she had demanded an engagement ring, and in retrospect, there were many odd things about it. It seemed she wasn't having that kind of relationship with Kevin, so perhaps Kevin was her real love interest. Daniel was just a dad. He realized he had been deceived by Riley. I had assumed he was a single father because only dad was saved in the contacts with no mom, but now I understood what that meant. Was it fun making a fool out of me, both of you? Daniel, I didn't know you and Riley were dating. It doesn't matter. You've embarrassed me. You both better be prepared. Daniel shook off Kevin's attempt to stop him and stormed out of our house. Riley and Kevin both collapsed to their knees. It's over. Oh dear, looks like you might lose your jobs and everything else, Kevin. Whose fault is that? Wait, what do you mean everything else? You're about to lose your family too. What? I quietly handed Kevin the divorce papers that Susan had fetched for me. Please sign this. Let's get divorced. I'll take custody of Ashley. Why? How can you make such a unilateral decision? Why? How can you even ask that? Don't you realize what you've done to Ashley? You could have given her a trauma for life. There's no way she can live with a man who does that. Are you stupid? One affair should be forgivable as a show of masculinity. What? Just as I was about to snap at Kevin's words, it happened. With a loud bang, Kevin fell backwards. He had been kicked by Mark. Still not cool-headed, despite being undressed, right? What a worthless son. Mark's face was red with anger. Although he was smiling, the aura emanating from his back was filled with murderous intent. Dad. I mean, I... Save your excuses. Mark grabbed Kevin's hair and slapped him across the face. It might seem excessive, but under the circumstances, it was probably justified. 
Nobody seemed to sympathize with Kevin. They probably thought he was too despicable to deserve sympathy. Thus, under Mark's forceful approach, Kevin agreed to the divorce. He promised to pay alimony and child support, and he agreed to transfer all his assets to me without dividing any property. It feels slightly wrong to have taken everything from Kevin with just Mark's fists, without any legal proceedings, but considering what Kevin did to Ashley, it seems fair. May he deeply regret everything from the bottom of his heart. Afterward, Riley agreed to pay me a settlement, and she also ended up paying one to Daniel. Normally, it's difficult to claim damages for romantic fraud, but Riley had been careless, and various pieces of evidence of fraud came to light. A little investigation revealed her secret social media account detailing her sugar daddy activities, and it all came out. This scandal was also the reason she was fired from her company. Of course, Kevin's misdeeds were exposed too, and both of them ended up having to leave the company. Kevin's jobs was in a field where connections are crucial. Incidents at one company often spread as rumors to other companies. As expected, Kevin's scandal spread beyond his company, complicating his job search. Kevin managed to switch industries for his job, but it seemed the fit was off, and he didn't last long, changing jobs four times in his 30s. His resume began to look like that of someone who couldn't hold down a jobs is, and eventually, he couldn't get past any interviews. However, when one door closes, another opens. He found one place willing to hire him, despite his job hopping history. It was a small food processing factory, but it must have been a blessing for Kevin. But this company was infamous in the industry for having many employees break down and quit due to its exploitative practices. It was a curse disguised as a blessing. Serves him right. As for me, I turned our old home into a rental property and started living in an apartment close to the station with Ashley. Living in the house where all that happened didn't seem mentally healthy, especially after the divorce. Actually, I did ask Ashley before the divorce. Is it okay if we say goodbye to dad? I decided to divorce on my own initiative, so I was worried Ashley might still want her father around, but Ashley's response was unexpected. Yeah. Being taken to Riley's house where she didn't want to go, being neglected, having promises broken, and not being played with in the bath. All these betrayals by Kevin seemed to have long driven Ashley's heart away from him. It was such a hassle having to pretend to enjoy those outings. Ashley's mature comment made me laugh. Needless to say, it made me feel completely justified in getting the divorce. Right after the divorce, Kevin seemed uninterested in Ashley and never asked to see her. But as he grew older and remained alone, perhaps loneliness set in. Around the time Ashley started elementary school, he began reaching out. I want to meet as a family. No, we're not a family. However, Ashley scoffed at this and showed no interest in going. It's not that I refuse to let Ashley meet with Kevin, but Ashley herself has been finding ways to cancel their meetings at the last minute. Just the other day, she feigned illness at the last moment to avoid seeing him. It's my own doing, isn't it? Kevin seemed to realize her lies as he dejectedly acknowledged his part in this, yet he still holds out hope for a meeting. But it seems that hope might soon be crushed by Ashley herself. I never plan to see him again. For Kevin, facing a future with Ashley seems bleak. Meanwhile, Ashley and I have developed a bond like that of mother and daughter, or perhaps like friends. 
We go shopping for clothes together on weekends, where Ashley helps pick out my outfits, and I enjoy selecting her clothes and accessories. These joys are unique to having a same-sex parent. Ashley has recently developed a crush on a boy and wants to perfect her dessert-making skills, so I am teaching her how to make exceptionally delicious treats. Following my divorce, I utilized my experience as a patisserie before I was married and opened a cake shop. Despite struggles with price hikes and a new, cheaper chain store in the neighborhood, every time I see families come to celebrate special occasions with our cakes, I feel it's all worth it. Being part of someone's cherished memories is a joy. Although the chain store is a threat, our local customers prefer the warm flavors of our shop to the well-known store. Let's keep making warm-hearted sweets. I'll take over mom's shop one day. Ashley says things like that. I'm not expecting it, but if that day really comes, I'd be so happy. <laughs>